Hello and welcome to our How to Pass Maths series. In maths classrooms around the country, the focus on perfection often overshadows our true potential. Comparing ourselves to perfect solutions can be discouraging, leaving many students feeling down and dejected. Good or even great attempts will often be criticised for their flaws rather than being celebrated for their merits. During exam settings, this perfectionist mindset is dangerous. One mistake can feel catastrophic, triggering a downward spiral which drains your confidence and leaves you unable to perform to your full potential. But what if we could shift our perspective? We don't have to chase the elusive goal of perfection and obsess over the inevitable mistakes which drag us down. Instead, we can focus on building a solid foundation from the ground up. If we begin by targeting a 40% passing grade, we have an achievable starting point from which we can build on. So, are you ready to transform your approach to learning maths? Join me as I help you build from the base, step by confident step, towards the heights of your potential. In the 2023 Leaving Cert exams, Maths Paper 1 was divided into two sections. In Section A, you had to answer 5 out of 6 questions, worth 30 marks each. In Section B, you had to answer 3 out of 4 questions, worth 50 marks each. All in all, both sections were worth 150 marks, bringing the total to 300 marks for the paper. To achieve a passing grade of 40%, you would need to score at least 120 marks. After analysing the paper, I've pinpointed the easiest and most effective way to reach this threshold. Solving the highlighted questions would secure a passing grade. In this video, I'll guide you through the step-by-step -step solutions for each of these questions. This will demonstrate the minimum knowledge required to pass. If you can follow along and understand my explanations, then you can step into your own exam with confidence, knowing that you have the ability to pass the paper. Any additional knowledge you have beyond what I've covered is a bonus, allowing you to achieve even higher marks and realise your full potential. In question 1a, we are told that the price of a house is €240,000 at the start of 2019. We must find its price at the start of the following two years. In 2019, the price increases by 8%. To find the value of the increase, we multiply 240,000 by 8%. To get the price at the start of 2020, we add on this figure to the 240,000. This gives us an answer of 259200. In 2020, the price increases by a further 9%. To find the value of the increase, we multiply 259200 by 9%. Then, to get the price at the start of 2021, we add this on to our 259200. In 3a, we must solve an equation for x. First, we multiply out the brackets. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times 4 is 12. Next, we can simplify the 12 minus 5 to 7. Then, we subtract 7 from both sides. Simplify the right-hand side.
divide both sides by 6 and simplify the fraction on the right hand side. In question 4a, we are given the graph of a function, g of x. In part 1, we must estimate the value of g of 1.5. To do this, we draw a vertical line at x equals 1.5, and then draw a horizontal line where it meets the curve. This gives us an answer of 2. In part 2, we must estimate the value of x for which g of x equals minus 6. Here, we draw a horizontal line at minus 6, and then draw a vertical line where it meets the curve. The x value here is approximately minus 2.8. In part 3, we must find the number of real roots in the given domain. A root is a location where the function touches the x-axis, and our graph only touches the x-axis once. So the answer is one root. In question 5a part 1, we are told that it costs €12,000 to lay 240 metres of railway track. We must find the cost of laying 320 metres of track. Here, it will help to find the cost of one metre of track as an intermediate step. We know that 240 metres costs 12,000. If we divide both sides by 240, we find that one metre costs 50. From here, we can multiply both sides by 320 to find the cost of 320 metres. In part B, we are told that two towns are 120 km apart. A train makes the journey at an average speed of 180 km per hour. In part 1, we must find the time it takes the train to make the journey. To find the time, we divide the distance, 120 km, by the speed, 180 km per hour. Simplifying the fraction gives us an answer of 2 over 3 hours. In question 6a, we are given a function, g of x. In part 1, we must evaluate g of minus 5. To do this, we sub in x equals minus 5 into our function definition, and then calculate the answer. In question 7a, we are given a formula which relates the rain runoff, C, with the maximum amount of soil soakage, S. In part 1, we must find the value of C when S equals 15. To do this, we replace the S with 15 in our formula, and then calculate the answer. In part b, we have a function, p of t, which tells us the probability it is raining t hours after the start of the day. In part 1, we are asked to find p of 0 and p of 24. For p of 0, we sub in t equals 0 into our function definition, then calculate the answer. p of 24 is similar but this time we sub in t equals 24. In question 8, we are given a diagram of a rectangular garden which contains an irregularly shaped pond. In part 1, we must find the area of the rectangle. To do this, we multiply the length, 50 metres, by the width, 30 metres. This gives an answer of 1,500 metres squared. In question 9a, we are given a graph comparing t, the time in days, with the daily number of new cases of a disease. 
the actual number of cases are represented with dots, and a model for the number of cases is represented by a smooth curve. In part 1, we must estimate the actual number of cases when t equals 12 using the relevant dot. Well, this dot represents day 10, so this dot will represent day 11, and this dot will represent day 12. The number of cases at this dot is approximately 1,500. In part b, we are given a function, d of t, which models the number of daily new cases for a different disease. In part 1, we must fill in missing values in a function table. This involves subbing in the given t values into the function definition. Subbing in t equals 0 gives an answer of 2100. T equals 1 gives an answer of 2478. T equals 3 gives 3450. T equals 4 gives 4071. And T equals 5 gives 4804. In part 2, we need to graph these points. We do this by plotting a point for each of our pairs, and then joining the dots as best we can with a smooth curve. 